Hello everyone. Welcome to PSPICE Tutorials. In this video, I am going to show the design and simulation of a buck regulator. Let us start with the problem at hand. We have a buck regulator which is shown below. I will show it to you very soon. Has an input voltage Vs equals to 12 volts. The required average output voltage is Va equals to 5 volts at R equals to 500 ohms where R is the load resistance. And the peak to peak output ripple voltage is 20 millivolts. The switching frequency is 25 kilohertz. If the peak to peak ripple current of the inductor is limited to 0.8 amperes, determine part A the duty cycle, part B the filter inductance, part C the filter capacitance and lastly the critical values of L and C. Let us look at the regulator circuit here. This is a circuit I will be constructing for simulation. We have a BJT which acts as the control switch. Then we have the diode which acts as the uncontrolled switch. The L and C values we have to find out. And lastly the load which is a resistive load of value 5 ohms. It is given that the input supply is 12 volts DC. Let us solve this numerical and find the values for L, C, switching period of the transistor and the turn on time. Dear viewers, please note I am not going to discuss the working principle of the buck regulator. I already have made a video on that. You can click on the link that is shown in the top right corner right now for viewing that or I will leave a link of the same in the description below. Right, we start with the party of the question which is to find the duty cycle. We know that for a buck regulator the average output voltage is given by duty cycle multiplied by input voltage. Since we are asked to find the duty cycle, I rearrange this formula to find K equals to VA by Vs. VA is given as 5 volts, Vs is 12 volts. So the duty cycle is 41.67%. The switching period is given by 1 over the switching frequency. And the switching frequency is 25 kilo. So the switching period is 40 microseconds. So the turn on time of the switch which is given by T1 is equals to capital T which is the switching period multiplied by duty cycle which is K. After computation I will find it to be 16.668 microseconds. Moving on to find the value of the inductor. I have taken this equation from the mathematical analysis of the buck regulator. And after substituting all the values here, I find the value of the inductor to be 145.83 microhenry. Similarly, I find the value of the capacitor as 200 microfarad. Also, I find the critical values of L and C that can be used for the circuit. Again, the equations are taken from the mathematical analysis. And I find the critical value of the inductor to be 5.83 millihenry and the critical value of the capacitor to be 0 0.4 microfarad. After computing all these values, let us start the simulation. And I will start by launching the RCAT PSPICE application. Here I will start by creating a new project. I will name it as Buck Regulator. I will make sure the type of the project is PSPICE Analog or Mixed AD. Then I'll give a location for saving all my files. Right. Now I'll click OK. Here I'm asked whether I want to create the project based upon an existing project, which I don't want. So I'll click on create a blank project option and then click OK. That will take me to the schematic window. The place part window is not visible. So you can click on this icon here to enable it. Now let us start placing parts. I'll start with the DC source first, so search for VDC, place it here. Then instead of using a VJT, I will use a MOSFET. The only change between them is a MOSFET is a little faster device, so the rise and fall times can be very small. That is the only reason I am using a MOSFET. I am going to specifically use M2N6659. It's a power MOSFET as you can see the symbol is also shown here. Select that. 
click R on the keyboard to rotate it. Then let us place the diode. I will be using D1N 1190. Then I will place the inductor. Search for L. Select L analog. Place it here. Then search for C. Select C analog. Place it here. And lastly, the load which is resistive. So search for R and select R analog and place it here. Now let us start wiring. You can click on this icon to start wiring now. Lastly, to control the MOSFET, I'll be using a pulsating voltage. So search for V pulse. Select V pulse slash source. Let us say place it here. Now I'll once again enable wiring and connect the positive terminal of the V pulse to the gate terminal and the negative terminal to the source. Now let us start giving values. The DC voltage at the input is 12 volts. The inductor value as we have computed previously is 145.83 micro. The capacitor is 200 microfarad. And the load is 500 ohm. Coming to the pulsating voltage, let V1 be 0, V2 5 volts, delay 0. The rise time and fall time have to be taken from the data sheet, but for worst case scenario, I'm going to consider 2 nano for both rise and fall times of the MOSFET. The pulse width is equal to the on period of the MOSFET which we have computed previously as 16.668 micro. The overall period of operation is 40 microseconds. Lastly, let us place the ground. Click on this icon. Select zero cap sim. Place it here. Enable wiring and connect it to the circuit. Right, all the components are placed, values are given. Let us now create a simulation profile. So go to P Spice menu, select new simulation profile, give a name. I'll give it as buck regulator. A pop up window would appear, select that. In the analysis type, I let the analysis type be time domain or transient. No changes in the option window. Coming to this one, I will let us say run it for two cycles. So it is 80 micro. The step size I will give it as 0.01 micro. Let us apply. OK. Now, let us now run the simulation. But before that, let me just place some markers. So I will place a differential voltage marker across the input and across the capacitor. Since the capacitor voltage is equal to the output voltage, it's as good as placing a marker on the output itself. Let us run the simulation now. Right, so we got the simulation window. Some waveform is appearing, which means that there were no errors in the simulation circuit. This is our input voltage. This is the output voltage, which is shown in red. And as you can see here, the output voltage is very small. Let me just thicken this plot. Right. So as you can see here, the output voltage is very small. Now, one of the main reasons why this is happening is because when I was creating the simulation profile, I ran the simulation only for 80 micro. Whenever you are trying to measure the average value of the output voltage, make sure you run the simulation for at least 
100 times the overall period of the switching operation. So, in the worst case, let us say I will run it for 10 milliseconds. Right. Now, you can see that the capacitor voltage is rising and as you can see, it is reaching a value greater than 8 volts. As per our problem, the output voltage has to be 5 volts. In fact, when I say output voltage, it is the average value of the output voltage which should be 5 volts. So, what I will do is I will eliminate the input voltage source and I will convert this plot to average voltage plot. Now, to do that, double click on this and go to the left edge of this expression and write AVG and then put the rest of the expression within braces. Then you can click OK. Now, the waveform has now changed to the average voltage across the capacitor. However, we still find it is varying and is nowhere near the 5 volts we are expecting across the output. So, let us now make some tweaks into the circuit. I come back. I remove these markers across the capacitor. What usually happens is the capacitor will have an internal inherent resistance. So, to nullify that resistance, I will connect a series resistance with the capacitor. The value of this resistor should be very small. So, I will make it as 1 nano. Let me once again place the voltage marker across the capacitor and run the simulation. Right. So, now you can see that the output voltage is still varying and is not becoming constant. Once again, I will eliminate the input voltage and I will convert this instantaneous capacitor voltage to average capacitor voltage but the voltage here is still rising and is not becoming constant. So, we come back to the design. Note that while finding the values for the inductor and capacitor, we have also calculated the critical values of L and C. Maybe these values can help us in getting the correct output voltage waveform. So, I will go back to the circuit and place LC as 5.83 milli. And the capacitor as 0.4 microfarad. These are the critical values of LNC that one can put to obtain the correct output voltage waveform. Let me rerun the simulation. I'll once again remove the input voltage waveform. Now you can see the voltage across the capacitor is varying because it's filter capacitor and I'll change this to the average voltage. Right. Now, I will place a cursor here and find what is the average value. You can come back and see in this window, this 4.9203, which is exactly what we are expecting from this simulation. So, the input voltage is 12 volts and the output average voltage is 4.9203, which is almost equal to the idealistic value of 5 volts. The difference between the idealistic and practical value can be attributed to the switching losses of the elements that are used in the circuit. Right. Now, after verifying this, I can go for plotting the rest of the waveforms that I have shown here. You should note that I plotted the average output voltage first before plotting the other waveforms mainly to make sure that the regulator is correctly designed. After verifying the output voltage is almost equal to the idealistic value, I can now move on to the rest of the waveforms that I have shown here. I'll just go back to the circuit now. I'll place the markers for all those waveforms. I'll take a differential voltage marker. I'll place one across the diode. Then I have the current across the inductor, supply and capacitor. So, go back to the circuit. Select the current marker. Place it across the inductor terminal. 
capacitor terminal and the drain terminal of the MOSFET and lastly one more marker for the load current. Right, so I have placed all the markers to get the waveforms but very importantly you have to change the simulation profile because currently as you can see you are running it for the worst case scenario of 10 milliseconds and with such large time you will not obtain such waveforms. So reduce it back to 2 cycles which is 80 microseconds, apply ok and now you can run the simulation. Right, I have a lot of plots here. I'll make some space for getting all those plots into individual plots. Right, so we have the input voltage waveform at the top. Then we have the diode voltage. Please note the diode conducts only when the transistor is off. Then we have the inductor current waveform, then the supply current waveform, the capacitor current waveform, the capacitor voltage waveform and lastly load current waveform. Please note the last two waveforms the capacitor voltage and load current they are not proper as what we have shown here. This is mainly because to obtain a proper voltage across the capacitor as well as across the load you have to run it for a longer duration which I have already shown when I was demonstrating the average output voltage waveform. Right so that's it about the simulation of the buck regulator. If you like this video kindly like and share and subscribe to my channel for more videos on PSPICE tutorials. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.